Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Don't Look Back. Today I'm joined by Chase as we run through the second episode of this horror-themed survival cooperative game um, and try some of the uh, characters we didn't actually get to use in the first one. So Max and Seth will be joining the posse to try and find Pat. Pat's gotten lost in the woods somewhere. We don't know where they are. Ranger Sandy's been recruited by the gang. Go and try and find her, hopefully alive, maybe just in pieces. Uh, and the beast of Northwoods, Grayson, is still stalking the crew um, all through the, uh, the national park. So we'll show you the table. Show this episode and get it underway. We were playing Where's Pat? This was an investigate and survive mission um, where you and your friends have been camping for a couple days now, but last night you couldn't find Pat. The table setup uh, has thick woodland and lots of rocky outcroppings. There's a single cabin, derelict cabin, and one, two, three tear points. Now we also will be placing three points of interest that need to be searched. They Each one can only be searched once. Um, and for each one we've previously searched, we will be able to add one to the table roll to try and find Pat's remains. Now they are placed in the middle and then scattered eight inches from it using the scatter token. Flip this sucker, it's gonna go that way eight inches. So one of them's gonna end up on this little leafy outcropping right here. Could be Pat, could not be Pat maybe. The second one from this middle point is gonna be straight up eight. Maybe in the port john Yep, just over here. Last one, chase a flip it. So sideways eight, so like along that line, I'll measure it, oops. Sure, there we, go. there we go. Now the gang this time around is gonna be uh, Seth Newton and Max the Abs. Uh, Seth um, voted most likely to join the Trenchcoat Mafia. He's moved three, combat eight, awareness 13, uh, fright four and two luck. He's got the skill, well actually, once per turn, Seth may add two to an awareness before a roll. And then his flashlight creates a light zone, which of course removes terror uh, and terror points can't be um, entered by the villain or the, the monster, uh, and it's within six, not as an action. It has two batteries, though. Next, the abs, also a teen, he's a heartthrob. He's moved four, combat 10, awareness 10, fright four, luck two. He's got the baby blues, may give a female model within his awareness a free move action directly towards max once per turn. And he comes armed with a baseball bat. It's melee, does three injuries. Uh, not that that matters against our typically mutilated uh, bad guy. And then special rules, if the killer has any injuries uh, and takes any injuries from the baseball bat, the killer's move back two inches, so you can force him back with a move. Also, Alice and Ranger Sandy, who's been called to try and help or rescue everybody, they're all gonna get placed within four inches of this corner over here. So we're entering the cabin zone, this derelict cabin. It's clear I had somebody camped out next to it. There's two point of interest tokens generated within eight of each of these. So the second ones, this one's gonna be back here. And then for this one, it's gonna be back eight inches. And then the last one from here is gonna be back eight inches. Now the last one investigated is automatically Pat, uh, but it's automatically Pat's remains. <laughs> uh, if we're within two of it, we can make an investigation roll, and we add one for each one that's already been investigated. If Pat's not found when rolling the last token, it's always a 10, which is you find what's left of Pat. Uh, once Pat's found, remove the rest of the points of interest from the table. On a one to three, it's nothing. Four to seven, roll on the item table, which I'm gonna assume is the supplies. Uh, I guess it could be anything, it could be a weapon too. Uh, on an eight, you find Pat alive with a twisted ankle. Every character is minus one movement for us the plot. Add a fright token to the middle of table section A. And then nine, you find Pat alive. 10, you find what's left of Pat. All characters gain a tear and add a fright token to the middle of table section A. 14 turns in this mission, or plot rather. Special rules find your way. Characters cannot start investigating until turn two. Helps on the way, players can place a supporting character in the center of table section A on a uh, turn seven. And then lights, there's no lights starting on the table, although we could bang on the truck or the building to like create some, and also Seth has some. Objective, once Pat's been found, at least three of the characters, not including Pat, need to move off one of the table edges in section A before the end of turn 14. So we cannot lose more than one character. And then the theme killer, the Beast of Northwood, stalking, mutilated, menacing, and dead eye. Last mission, he's got 10 wounds, uh, driven off. All characters remove additional terror point if we do manage to actually drive him off. Special actions, when a mutilated killer takes injuries, reduce the amount taken by two to a minimum of one. Uh, so super hard to kill. Uh, various blades, combat 15, three damage of injuries. And then wild swings, all the characters not hit by various blades within two of a mutilated killer take an injury. Stalking, so if he shows up from being driven off or disappearing, place the killer six inches out of the front arc of the character furthest from the center of board section A. The killer will move towards that character. If there's a tie, the players may choose. 
He doesn't get driven off very often, though, because of uh, the fact that he's mutilated. And then menacing, characters have to pass an awareness check uh, to attack the killer with a melee attack. And then finally, dead eyes, characters that activate within line of sight of this killer gain a terror. So round one, uh, on a 10, we will roll during the fright phase. So roll me a d10, and see if we have to roll for fright tokens. It's... No. No killer, no fright tokens, but jump stairs could still generate. Go first, who's gonna activate? So first action. Okay, uh, Alice is gonna go. She's gonna move her five inches. Spin around this way, give her a free action to uh, Ranger Sandy for the raw, raw, raw. Yeah, so That's he gets plus three for motivation. Yep, and she's going to run again, another five inches. She has no terror on her, so she doesn't have to worry about falling down and tripping. Sandy, uh, much the same thing, just gonna run, run. So an armed uh, character with an unarmed character, that makes sense. Lose her full eight inches. Yep, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, same for us, we're gonna try and investigate this token, I think. So we're gonna send, um, Max first, going four. And I have to make a jump scare because he's going to walk into those rocks. Happens, he gets a eight. Green shadows, we get a terror point. And then we'll move again. Going four around this edge. I'm going to go investigate this token. And then Seth, he's going to move and he'll go his three, followed by three again. And his second move brings him within two of that edge. So a jump scare, it's a 10. Uh, screams in the distance. Move all fright tokens D10 toward this character. Oof, so this one, three. This one, eight, towards Seth. Dun, 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 dun. And then the last one, three. So move it three towards Seth. Any lights would f have uh, flipped during the villain phase, but we don't have any on the table right now. So it's round two. So now on a, I believe it's a six plus, we roll for terror tokens or fright tokens? Yep. Six plus. Six plus. Yep. One first, so over here, six. It moves six inches towards the nearest character. So that's going to be towards max, I think. Up to here. This one over here. Nine. Is that the killer? Uh, right, so it's here. Yep. Conjured the killer. So the killer gets conjured coming out of this lake. No big surprise. Last one. I think it just flips lights and disappears. Beast has arrived, uh, so it moves D10 plus my fright towards the nearest character, which would be Max. So D10 plus one, so seven, because he has a fright. And that'll put him up here. He ignores difficult ground, so he just busts through the fence. Well, that's inconvenient. <laughs> uh, we do have a play here, though. Uh, all light tokens would flip at the end of the villain phase, but they don't. So I can do some stuff here with Seth in particular. And that means we're gonna start with Max. He's gonna move his four to here. He's gonna make a jump scare, which is a one. Yeah. Uh oh. Place the killer in base to base with the character and make an attack with a attack two. Oh, he lunged at me. One or two, he misses. Oh, sorry, D D20, Ash. He misses with a three, barely. It's a fight of two. I have a terror on me, so three actually hits. So I take three injuries. One, two, three. And now I get to make my second action though. I'll melee him back, I think. To roll a awareness check first on a 10 or less to actually make the attack. So 10 or less, I pass the nine. And then 10 or less to hit him with my baseball bat. And as long as I hit him, I drive him back two inches. Bam! Yes, with a six. So I do two, which goes to one injury. And I drive him back two inches. So my play actually works, because I can walk six with Seth. Uh, the first action actually will bring me within two, so I have to make another jump scare. Two. Uh, eerie sounds, the character makes an awareness test. On a failed test, the character trips. So I'll use what action you need to make myself awareness 15, and I pass. I gain a terror though, because I can see that sucker. Uh, as could Max, actually, so he would have had another terror. And then I move my second three inches, and now I use my flashlight to drop a light on both of us, which the killer can't enter. Dun 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 dun. Well, we've we've made our play. So girls, you need to go find Pat, because the boys are dealing with uh, dealing with problems over here. Well, namely, the killer's over here. namely happy face killer man <laughs> over here. No terror tokens. I'm going to run uh, Alice. Uh, runner five. Make a jump scare for the woods. Uh -huh. Hopefully it teleports um, Ranger <laughs> Sandy. Seven? Seven. Uh, strange shadow. The character gains one terror point. No! Okay. Give her a raw, raw, raw to the Ranger Sandy. And then she's going to move her five again. 
And then Sandy. Sandy, uh, yeah, she's just going to move, move. She can probably stay outside of two of that thing too. I'm yeah. not have to make any jump scares because it'll actually teleport. Um, what's your name back if you make one on your second move? Which we had that happen uh, in our, which our, is the, yeah, our which previous is game. Yeah, roll because you do have some terror on you. No, you don't need terror on you. Yeah, you want terror on me? No, whatever. That's, no, that's, that's, that's on Sandy actually. That's right. Yeah, they're not on Sandy. Yeah, Alice. That's right. All right, so you are rod rod for your next awareness tech, uh, and that puts us into turn three. So turn three, uh, I think on turn three it's on a. Five plus, we roll for plus. tokens. Nope, not rolling for them this turn. Nice. Uh, so just the killer phase. Now the killer can't enter the, uh, the um, light, but goes five towards it and just stays outside of it. Token flips. Dun, 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 dun. It goes dark. Not the best, not the worst. The light is here, uh, but it's keeping us safe right now. It will flip again at the end of next turn. So I think what we have to do is we have to move everybody into investigation range. So we're gonna go two, four to here. With our first move, we gotta make a jump scare though. Just don't get hit. We roll a nine for the jump scare. Uh, laugh it off, remove one terror point. Yeah, all right, so I didn't, I gained one. Oh, I think during the fright phase, I actually removed one from being in the light. This is gaining one from seeing the killer, and then another one from his jump scare. And then he'll move four again. And go to here. Seth's gonna go, and he's gonna move three and make a jump scare. And he rolls a 10. Uh, screams in the distance, move all fright tokens D10 towards this character. So this one goes nine inches towards him. That's the only one on the table right now, because I want to turn into the beast. So it ends up over here. And then he'll move three again, and then use his other battery. And be like, no thanks. <laughs> Not doing this. Save for a turn at least. Uh, and then it's over to you. Okay. Um, Alice is gonna go, she's gonna move her five, four, yeah, five inch, or She has to get within two, so she get, doesn't have to move all the way if she doesn't want to. Okay. Or she can move up the hill too to get closer to this one and Ooh, stay within two of it. Good call. Do, 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 do. There we go. There you go, and then make your jump scare. Sure. Eight. Eight. Oh, terror point. Things are getting spooky. Yay! Okay, uh, awareness test. So she's awareness. Twelve. Twelve. So on a twelve or less, she investigates this thing. She does. So awesome. we roll for where's Pat? D10, and we're trying to roll like a six, seven, eight, four. four. It's a supply. Uh, roll an item table. Okay, so now the item table, you roll D10. On a uh, plus three to this roll, so on a one to five, normally it would be a weapon. On a six to ten, it would be an um, item. But you're plus three because we're looking outside. So that's an eight, eight, which means you're rolling the item table. Okay. And you were find a three, which is what? Energy drink. Uh, no, it's not energy drink. Sorry, three is a phone. Discard the phone cool. in the building as a uh, long action to add a supporting character to the table. Sweet. Officer Rob Brady. So you now have a phone. And there's no need to support this turn because you've already supported her for her next activation, no matter what it is. Yep. And she has to move. She's gonna move. Oh, yeah. She's gonna move up to the next uh, token. And yeah, we can flip this one to say we've searched it. Four inches, jump scare. Six shoulder. Yay! Nice. So you That's tell it. you teleport uh, her over in front of you, I guess. Yep. <laughs> Get over here, right. girl. <laughs> and then she's gonna move her uh, next four inches. Now, if there was no character with the eight of you, you'd gain a terror instead. So you're out of actions. Now, you could make a desperate action. First of all, you don't have any terror on you, so you don't have to test check to see if you fall down, but you can make a minus 10 awareness test to investigate. You can do any action at a minus 10 after you make two move actions that involves awareness. So your awareness yeah. two right now, minus 10, but plus three, so five. Actually, uh, awareness 11, so, so four. So four. Oh, well done. All right, so we flip <laughs> it, and you get plus one to this roll now to see if we find Pat. Seven? Seven. Did we find her? Uh, no, roll an item table. All right, so again, plus three to this roll, so D10 plus three. A Four, one. I think you actually find a weapon. Ooh. So roll on the weapon table. Weapons tend to do much good against uh, the Beast of Northwoods. Six. Six. Chainsaw. Oh my god. <laughs> so you have a damage three melee weapon, but it's as good as your fists against him because he's mutilated. All of uh, the tokens move six towards you because you make a mess. Well, that's everybody having gone. We're plus two now to see if we find Pat. We investigate this next turn. So turn four, and are we rolling for tokens on a one? I think that's a no. No. Uh, but the killer gets to move and goes directly towards 
Seth, but stopped because he won't go into the light. Well, now we don't have to make any light tests, or sorry, terror tests this turn because we start the turn in light. Oh no, but it, <laughs> never mind, it flips the end of his activation. So we do get terror. But we didn't get attacked. This one flips on though over here. And we're out of batteries. Seth, uh, you're gonna gain one for seeing the bad guy. And you're gonna attempt to investigate this token. You'll use one action E for 15 or less. And you do have two luck to reroll this. You pass. So we're at plus two to the roll to see if we find Pat now. Hey, 10. Oh. oh, we find Pat. We find, oh, we found Pat. what's left of Pat. Great. Uh, so Pat is dead. There's pieces of Pat all splattered around here. Uh, and I have one action left with Seth. Now, unfortunately, Seth may have to take one for the team. Uh, we're going to go two, three to here. I'm just uh, standing outside the light. Then we're going to go with Max. Max is going to get a terror and go to five, which is not great because he's only fright four. So he's minus two to tests now. But he's just going to walk eight back into this light and be like, sorry, nerd, later. Uh, Seth may, may take one for the team later on. Uh, it's over to you. You can just start heading towards the table edge if you want. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Uh, now, the other thing you could do is move towards the table edge and summon a supporting character, which would save Seth with your cell phone. Because uh, uh, the beast will go after the supporting character with your cell phone. Uh, I have to be in a building to actually use it. Oh, nuts. Um, Alice is going to go just raw raw ranger over there, and she's going to move her five. Jump scare. Jump scare. See if you can just teleport Sandy back. Right. Six. Six. Tap on the shoulder Tap again. On the shoulder. Beautiful. Overcomes Ranger Sandy. Yep. And if you want, you could put her on the other side to be there two inches go. away from the terrain. Yep. Like that. There, there you go. go. Where, are you, where are you going? <laughs> yeah, and she's going to move her second action. And uh, encourage Sandy. All right, well, round is five. Oh, Sandy going to go anywhere? anywhere? She can walk too, I forgot. Yeah, she's going to walk over to uh, Alice. That's Let's all. get the other side. Other side. Okay, it's turn five. And uh, three plus or two plus for rolling for tokens this turn. That's a two, which is uh, still sure. a fail. Yeah. So it's just the beast. He goes ten and just slams into Seth. It says, hello, I'm here to ask you a question. It's carrying two terror, so it's plus two, so 17 or less to hit. Rolls a 17 and slams into him for three damage. Three wounds on Seth. Everything flips. The lights turn off on Max. I'm gonna see if I can save the kid. If I can knock him out of the way. We'll move four into him. Uh, awareness to try and attack. We do with a nine, uh, but we're minus two because of the fright. I could actually... Actually, sorry, I have six fright on me because of the light. I could have used a luck to reduce that. I'll remove two. I would have gained one and then remove two for a luck point. Uh, that's going to make that a hit because I needed to not be missing. Uh, and then I'll do two and knock that guy back. Turns into one damage. So we knock him back two into the light, which doesn't do anything to him. Uh, and then my last action, I'm going to move. Oh, I can't move again with him. He's done. But the kid can move. And the kid can move three, and then three again. For the girls. Okay, um, I think you just get off the table or I can come help you. I mean, if you I, move towards me, you're yeah. helping me, and you're not quite leaving the table yet. That's true. That's you could true. also draw off, potentially, the beast. That's also true. Okay, Alice is going to go. She's going to move her five, five. As long as you can stumble away off the table, I say stay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't abandon you. That's right. All right, she's going over there. Uh, she's making a trip action, though. Because she's got two terror. Aha! No, she's fine. fine. Uh, and I guess you could encourage using one of your megaphone batteries. Yeah, there's awareness. There you go. So he's plus three, and then Sandy can move eight. Yep. And she doesn't yep. have any tear, so she doesn't fall down. All right, turn six. We automatically roll for the tokens now. So rolling for this one, a nine. Uh, we roll to see if he becomes enraged or not. We roll a four, so he actually becomes stalking and goes after the most exposed character. The character the furthest from any other friends, and that would actually be... Um, from the highest concentration, which actually just be max. So he goes in base to base, but he doesn't attack this turn. So he's at a line of sight, sorry. He goes back to there. Okay then, uh, and, and then all the light tokens flip. So this one turns off, and the one on Seth turns on. It's the light, which means he doesn't get any terror this turn. Uh, I think there's not a lot to do here, except for see if I manage to knock you back with a baseball bat. So, swing the baseball bat. Uh, we could use our luck to remove the fright, which I think we'll do because otherwise we'll be at a penalty. 
Make an awareness check on a 10. Pass, sorry, uh, wrong die. Fail, uh, and then that means he loses his first action. Try again. Pass, hit on a 10. Uh, miss with an 18. And so he doesn't drive him back, and he's stuck in melee. Back to you. Okay. I do have that skill stay behind me. I could try to save Max. And how does that work? Does it have that a range? Is, uh, once per turn, Ranger Sandy may target a killer model within her awareness. The target killer model moves into base contact with the Ranger Sandy. The killer model counts as moving. So I need him hmm. within... Um, you could do that, yeah. So if I... Awareness. So if I rah rah rah, because you're plus three to her awareness, yep. that's 14. Yep. Okay, so she is going to go first then. Ra ra ra, plus three to awareness. That's for a check, not her stat though. That's that's okay. to the, when you make a, a test, I think. Okay. He'll move her eight and yep. then do it and teleport him. Yeah, let's do that. So eight up to here. Okay, jump scare for going near the train. This might just bring there him over go. anyway. Ha, five. How about shoulder? Oh no. Oh wait, uh, him gets to go. Close you can tap. Yeah, you can tap him. Close his model. So, so yep. back to Boom. them. Later. Later. And then the killer gets straight over to me. Using your get behind me? Yep. Uh, and then Seth is just going to leave. <laughs> uh, and then that's all her activations. And this, he counts as having moved, uh, which doesn't change much because now it's a new turn. Turn seven, and the important thing about turn seven is we get to place an innocent bystander. Officer Rod Farber appears right here. Well, hello! We automatically roll for tokens, rolling for this one. A five, it just moves towards the man of the legend of this max. Uh, and then this guy beelines towards Farber. Roll a d10, see how far he goes. Seven. seven. So I, don't, I think he maybe gets him. Yeah, oh, definitely yeah. gets okay. him. Okay, go get him. Ah! Well, hello, officer. <laughs> okay. I'm on a 15. Uh, that'll do. He just gets obliterated by an axe. Blech. And then we all go and say, I think it's time to leave everybody. Uh, Seth has left, so we're going to gain a terror. Oh, sorry, these would have flipped the end of that activation. Uh, we'll gain a terror on Max, or fear other. Uh, he's going to move four, generate a jump scare. It's a six. Uh, tap on the shoulder. All right, so. Sandy moves over here. No, get in the light, Sandy. And then he leaves through the table edge on A, and then everybody else leaves too. And says, no, we're out of here. We found what's left to Pat. We watch that officer get killed. We steal his cop car and we go home. Here we go, well, it's, where's Pat? And we managed to find, well, we found some pieces of Pat over here. What's left of them? Uh, Max and Seth had a mighty adventure in which both of them got kind of beat up by the, uh, the beast of Northwoods. Uh, and then of course, poor officer Farva, once again, taking one for the team, trying to find his leader cola. Couldn't find it, just found a guy who wanted to ask him a question. Come on, focus. There we go. Poor Farva. So here we go, finding the remains of Pat next to the lake. Everything going fairly well for the characters this time around. And of course, uh, I think when you focus on the, the mutilated characters, not trying to kill them, but just trying to do the objective, the game goes a lot better because they're almost impossible to take out with anything that you have weapon-wise. So we found a chainsaw on it, it was just going to do as much as like our bare hands. So um, the next adventure, I believe, uh, will be in two weeks. Until then, big thanks for watching. I'm Ash, not programming. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Bay Designs, um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible, uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else, and most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.